All right, as we move forward in this chapter on plants, I wanted to back up for just a minute to make sure you were getting the big picture of where we're going here. So this is the same branching diagram that I told you was on the last page of your lesson plans, but I threw it up here just because I wanted to draw your attention to it and make sure that you were seeing it. So if I have all of the plants together, I can subdivide plants into those that are vascular and those that are non-vascular. Remember, vascular means that they have um, tubes within them that carry water and dissolve materials to all parts of the plant. We'll talk a whole lot more about that when we get into module 12. Um, but for right now, um, the mosses, the bryophytes are non-vascular, whereas the tracheophytes are vascular. Okay, so we talked about the mosses. We talked about how um, their um, dominant generation is the gametophyte generation. But once you get into the tracheophytes, everything over on this half of the diagram is a dominant sporophyte generation. So the tracheophytes, which are all vascular, are going to further subdivide into those that make seeds and those that do not make seeds. We talked the last time about the pteridophytes or the ferns, which are seedless. They do not produce seeds, um, but there are also um, a lot of plants that are fall in this classification that are seed makers. The seed makers then subdivide into two different categories. We either have gymnosperms or we have angiosperms. The classification here is based on the types of seeds that they make. Um, an angiosperm produces an enclosed seed, and so these are what we commonly think of as the flowering plants, whereas the gymnosperms, they're, they're more your conifers, uh, your pine trees, your, your fir trees, trees like that, and they have what's classified as a naked seed. So today we're hitting the gymnosperms, and so that's going to be the alternation of generation cycle that we're going to talk about today. Again, like I said, all of your tracheophytes are going to have a dominant sporophyte generation. So the, um, the difference between um, our seed makers and the others is that when we talked about the, um, the bryophytes and the pteridophytes, they actually had separate, almost you could almost see them as separate plants, plant structures that made up the different generations. When I get into the gymnosperms and the angiosperms, um, the gametophyte generation is still there, but it is not a separate plant. That gametophyte is protected within the sporophyte generation. So um, if you think about a, a pine tree, um, and, which is the sporophyte generation, the part that we see, the dominant generation, a pine tree will produce both seed cones and pollen cones. Now the seed cones are the ones that everybody likes to collect. You know, you um, got them around your house at Christmas time to make decorations or whatever. Um, but there are also pollen cones on the tree, which are much smaller. The seed cone is going to go through, and the pollen cone as well. Both of those cells within them are going to go through meiosis to create the seed cones produce megaspores, the pollen cones produce microspores. And once the spores are produced, they will then go through mitosis and um, the seed cones then will produce your egg and your pollen cones produce the microspores, which will then produce the sperm. Now the sperm in this case are actually enclosed within a pollen grain um, the angiosperms do something very similar, and we'll talk about that in another couple of days here. Um, and we're not going to go into a lot of the details for the gymnosperms as to how that happens, but the sperm are enclosed within a pollen grain, and then the pollen grain has to get um, to where the egg is. They will join in fertilization and form a zygote. The zygote then becomes an embryo inside of a seed coat. And then when the conditions are, are correct, are, are good, then the embryo will germinate and turn into a seedling, which will then grow into a full grown sporophyte. Okay, um, so this is a much more, perhaps a more detailed diagram than what we've seen before. But again, the difference here is that even though in the diagram that I've drawn, the two generations are equal. They really are not. And in the diagram in your book, they kind of have this shrunk up a little bit so that you can see that all of this actually happens within the sporophyte. 
Um, I left the um, diagrams the way they were just because I wanted you to be able to compare them that way. But please do understand that it's the sporophyte generation that's dominant. Um, we are, aren't going to see this happen because it all happens within these, within these different cones and that's where all of the gametophyte generation is actually taking place.